Hello everyone. So students, this is our story time and we're going to read Listening to My Body by Gabby Garcia and illustrated by Ying Huan Tan. Listening to My Body, a guide to helping kids understand the connection between sensations, what are those, and feelings so they can get better at figuring out what they need by Gabby Garcia. My body is my friend. It tells me lots of things. I yawn when I'm tired. My stomach growls to let me know I'm hungry. And sometimes I get goosebumps when I'm cold. Has that ever happened? This happens on its own without me doing anything. I may not even notice that it's happening, but I can start paying attention to my body. And so can you. Let's practice. Look closely at the palm of your hand. Trace the lines of your palm slowly and softly with your finger. When you finish, Switch your hands. How did that feel? When I pay attention to my body, I notice many different sensations. Sensations are the physical feelings we all have inside and outside our bodies. Cold, sweaty, strong, and breathless are examples of some sensations. Have you ever felt that before? Let's practice. Rub your hands together quickly for 30 seconds. <gasps> what did you notice? Did you notice heat or tingles? Sweat? Anything else? Those are sensations. My sensations in my body are always changing. There's times when my body is so wiggly and squirmy, it's like I have ants in my pants. At other times, my body is calm and still. Sometimes the beat of my heart is like a gentle tap. Sometimes it feels like a pounding drum. Let's practice. Put your hand over your heart and find its beat. It's okay if you can't. Now, jump up and down quickly 15 times. Okay, place your hand on your heart. What happened to your heartbeat? Did it change or stay the same? Do you notice anything else? Is there a temperature change? Are you feeling warmer or is it harder to breathe? I can also listen to my body for clues about how I'm feeling about the things happening around me. Feelings are not good or bad. They're something we all experience. Curious, proud, grumpy, scared. These are a few feelings we have. What other feelings can you name? What I've learned from listening to my body is that sensations and feelings go together. I noticed this when I got to ride a roller coaster for the first time. I was super excited. I was finally tall enough to ride it out, but I also felt nervous as I climbed on board. My belly felt squishy and fluttery. My mom calls that having butterflies in your stomach, but I thought it felt more like a kitty ch chasing ping pong balls in there. What sensations do you notice when you're excited or nervous? When I got off the roller coaster, I was buzzing and tingly all over. My eyes were like saucers. I had a smile plastered on my face. I felt awesome. Let's practice. Place your hand on your belly and take 10 deep breaths. How does your belly feel? Does it feel soft, relaxed, tight, something else? Sometimes when I'm sad, I get a lump in my throat 
and it makes it hard to talk or to breathe. Soon, warm tears roll down my face, and I start to cry harder. Crying makes me feel better. So do hugs. We all feel sad at times. What do you need when you feel sad? We're going to practice. Wrap your arms around yourself and give yourself a gentle hug. Move your hands up and down your arms. Squeeze a little tighter and just feel and find what feels best for you. Looser and softer, tight and squishy. Do you like tight or gentle squeeze? What works for you? My mom once explained to me that sensations and feelings are like the waves in the ocean. Some come crashing in while others roll in gently and they always come and go. We can't stop the waves from coming, but we can pay attention to them so they don't knock us over. Sometimes my skin gets burning hot and my jaw and fists feel hard as rocks. That happened to my body the last time I got really angry at my sister. She just destroyed the puzzle I was working on all afternoon. I stomped my feet and I slammed the door. I really, really wanted to kick it. But then I remembered to take deep breaths and blow out through my lips like a horse. And it didn't take long for my jaw and my hands to relax and my skin to cool down. The angry feeling and sensations faded away. Blowing horse lips even made me feel a little silly, and it tickled. I decided to put the puzzle on a table that my sister couldn't reach. So let's practice. Close your mouth so your lips touch gently. Inhale through your nose. And blow a strong puff of air through your mouth so your lips puff out like a horse. <sighs> Try that a couple times. <sighs> One more. What do you notice? How does your lips feel? How does your jaw feel? Oop, oop, ah, technical difficulties. <laughs> so sometimes I get overwhelmed and I need help from a grown up. On the first day of school, I woke up super early because I couldn't stop thinking about what my new class would be like. My stomach felt like it was tied in knots, so I didn't eat breakfast. In class, it was hard for me to focus on what my teacher, Miss Morgan, was saying, and my body was shaking. When it was time to line up, I accidentally bumped my desk and knocked my stuff all over the floor. Everything was wrong. Miss Morgan helped me pick up my things and I took deep breaths like she reminded me. I told her about my morning and she explained, our brains have a hard time thinking when they're tired and hungry. Miss Morgan thought I'd feel better if I had a snack and rested in a quiet area while the class was at recess. She was right. I was calm and able to focus so the rest of my day went so much better. It's okay to get help when we need it. Who is an adult that helps you out? At other times when I'm upset, I can figure out what I need on my own by listening to my body. I can pay attention to my breathing, my heartbeat, my temperature of my skin, or to any other sensation. Am I hungry or thirsty? Am I tired or full of energy? Is my belly tense and tight or soft and relaxed? These are questions I can ask myself. I can also try to name my feelings. Do I feel peaceful or playful? Confused or frustrated? Hurt or cranky? There's different ways I may be feeling and they're all okay. Listening to my body and naming what I feel takes practice, but it helps me figure out what I need. Do I need to have a snack? Drink some water? Get some rest? Do I need to take deep breaths? Sing my favorite song? Do I need to sit in a quiet place alone or go outside and jump around? I can color or draw, dance, cuddle with my dog, or hang around someone that I love. These are things I do that help me feel calm, happy, or peaceful. Everyone is different. You get to decide what feels best for you. The more I practice listening to my body, the better I get at responding with care and kindness for myself. I can get better at listening to my body. So can you. Let's practice. Listen to your body. Do you want to sit down or stand up? 
Do you need to be still or move around? Would you like to wiggle and jiggle, hop and dance? It's your body, so you get to decide. Move in a way that feels good for you. So listen to your body. Know the sensations. Do you have ants in your pants? Are you breathless? Are you full of energy? Do you have goosebumps? Are you sweaty? Is your stomach growling? And know your feelings. What feelings do you notice right now? Are you calm, peaceful, proud, hurt, confused, lonely, silly, upset, nervous, excited? Let's figure out and practice. These are activities that may help your body feel calm, peaceful, relaxed. Having a snack, getting water, resting, singing a song, sitting in a quiet place alone, going outside and jumping around, coloring, drawing, dancing, cuddling with a pet, hanging around someone you love. And you can also do that belly breathing or wrap your hands or do that horse. So these are things that you can practice. And with that, I love you all. And I hope you enjoyed our book. The end.